everybody, it's Rebecca here at My Mermaids, and welcome to my August wrap up. I read a total of 12 things in August, which is probably the most I've read all year in, in the last like long time in one month. I've read a lot this month. It was August, it was summer. I also focused mostly on YA this month because I uh, school is about to start again and I wanted to get back into the mindset and have some good books to recommend students. So I was reading a lot of YA. And YA tends to be faster. Also, three of the things that I read were single issues of a comic book. So, I mean, they were like 30 pages each. It's not like they were gigantic, but I still read 12 things. 12 things compared to last month, which was like, what, three because of 1Q84? Anyway, 12 things. Let's get into it, starting with my lowest and working up to my highest. Oh, and I had a 3.91 average rating. Most of these are four stars, all but like four of them or something like that. So anyway, let's start at the bottom and work our way up. First book I read this month and my lowest read is The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. I buddy read this one with Trina from Between Chapters. So far we have buddy read two of the three Ruth Ware books together and the first one we, that we didn't buddy read, we've both already read. So yeah, it was fun. I love buddy reading with Trina and that was really great. And if you don't know Trina, Trina Between Chapters, you should know her, she's awesome. Anyway, so we read The Lion Game. It was not my favorite of all the Ruth Ware novels. It was my least favorite of the three so far. It was more of a mystery than it was like a thriller. And it again deals with like characters going into like a singular location for the most part, but it's more like in the past and it is current and then you're finding out secrets and things like that. And it is called The Lying Game, so somebody's lying, who's lying, what's happening. But I just didn't really, I don't know, I wasn't as gripped as I have been in the past by some of her writing. So while I enjoyed it, because I always love a good like mystery, it wasn't my favorite, so three star. My other three star read was Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. I might have read this one as a kid, I don't remember. I don't know if I'd read it or not, so I figured I would read it. I wasn't the biggest fan of it, honestly. Like I knew the story, I know that, you know, there's the the spring that allows for the, the tucks to live forever, essentially, and does your main character, I forget the girl's name, but you know, she has to grapple with does she drink from the spring or not? And there's like this like chase thing, but I didn't, I didn't really remember any of that except for the spring and that eternal life thing. So I don't know, I really like the concept of Tuck Everlasting, but I just didn't really care about the characters or the story at all. Like I felt like it could have the same kind of idea and like theme could have been explored in a much better way. So I only gave it three stars. I know at the time it was probably like really like wow, but eh, meh. At four star reads, the first one, it's it's a book I had to read for school. It was summer reading, it's called Better Than Carrots or Sticks. And it's basically all about like discipline in school and things like that. So you're not interested. I had to read it for summer reading, but it was better than I anticipated it being. I liked the ideas put forth, which is why I gave it four stars, but it wasn't like gripping. It wasn't like a book that I'd be like, you should pick up that. Unless you're an educator and you want to try a different approach to like discipline and behavior management. So otherwise it just, I'm going to move on. If you want more information, feel free to chat with me in the comments about it, but I'm not going to waste everyone else's time. Let's keep going. I picked up The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness this month, which I really enjoyed. I'd heard good things about it. It's been on my shelf for a while. And again, I was like, I'm going to read the YA that's been on my shelf for a long time, so I did. And I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. I kept picturing Eleven from Stranger Things as the girl. I don't know, it just fit really well in my head. It just she, I don't know, it was great. It was, I really liked it. I like this concept, like a futuristic alien society and the men, you can hear, everyone hears what everyone thinks all the time. So there's no quiet. And then one day there is a bit of quiet and what happens? And the boy is about to become a man and when he becomes a man, he finds out things. That's the premise. It's really cool though. I was skeptical and now I wanna pick up book two. I need to find the time. All the book twos, all the book twos. That's all I have on my shelf are like book twos because I never pick up book two anyway. 
I liked that one. I picked up The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan this month as well, which is a collection of nonfiction and fiction short stories by Marina Keegan, who obviously, because I already said that that's who the book was by. If you don't know, Marina Keegan was a Yale graduate who tragically died in a car accident like three days after graduation, but she was a very talented writer. But because she died really early, her family and her professors wanted to put together a collection of some of her work to showcase, and so they put together this collection, and I was blown away. It was so good. I was like, she's 22 and she wrote this? <gasps> what am I doing with my life? That's how I felt reading it. But they're really good. You've probably read The Opposite of Loneliness, the title essay, which was from the like last edition of her, the Yale Daily News that she wrote for it. I would just recommend reading that one essay if you're curious and then start from there. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. I think she writes young people and youth really, really, really well and it was inspiring. I might use it in class. I really liked it. I know I just read 1Q84 and apparently that wasn't enough Haruki Murakami for me because I picked up The Strange Library from the library, which I felt was very fitting, which is very short. It's almost like children's because it's really, really, really short and the font's kind of big and it literally took me 30 minutes to an hour to read it. It was not much at all. It's about a boy who goes to the library and the library tries to kidnap him, essentially. And there's weird things that happen because it is Haruki Murakami, so weird things always happen. But it was a nice change of pace from 1Q84 because 1Q84, again, is 1,152 pages and this was like a hundred. It was great. It was a very different, but I really enjoyed it. And yeah, it was a nice, a nice addition to my Murakami reading experience. I read all three issues of Sons of Aries, which is the Red Rising spin-off prequel comic book, basically, made by Pierce Brown and other people, I forget their names. It's essentially the prequel story of what happened before Red Rising, like who is Aries, because if you've read the book, you know that Aries is a person. And so it talks about that and that whole story. I would not recommend reading it if you have not read Red Rising, though, because it's gonna spoil things and you're gonna be confused, like really confused. So I would, if you are a Red Rising fan, though, I recommend it. There's only three issues out right now. I read all three of them, which is why I have 12 books, because there's not a graphic novel. But I did tweet Pierce Brown and he did tweet me back and I was like, what? I was very excited when he tweeted me back. And there is going to be an omnibus of them all, but it's probably gonna be a year from now until that happens, or so is what he said. So I wanted to pick up the comic books, and I found them, and so I picked them up and I read them. And I gave all of them four stars, because I love Ren Rising. Artwork is not my favorite artwork, but I like the story. I like to be able to see the things in my head, and it's really cool the way they differentiate between the different levels. So Red Rising is a, a society built on colors, and your, your color determines like your station in life and like your job and things like that. And it's all like engineered and whatnot. Anyway, so they determine in the comic book who, what color you are by the thought your speech bubble is that color, which I thought was really interesting and a good way to differentiate. Like, oh, that person's a red. Oh, that's a gold. Oh, that's a pink. It was really cool. I liked that a lot. And my last four star read was All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. This was actually the last book I read in the month as well. It was so good. It was so good. This one was recommended by a lot of students that said this was like their favorite book that they read last year and I never read it and I felt like I should probably read it because Duh, if people like it, I should read it. So I did read it. It's a story, uh, if you don't know, of a boy and a girl who kind of discover, they find each other, they knew of each other, but they like friend each other after they meet on top of a clock tower type thing and like save each other from jumping idea. And it's so good. I just really liked it. It deals with mental health issues. It deals with thoughts of suicide and depression and it deals with grief. So, and parental figures who are missing or lackadaisical or abusive and things like that as well. So trigger warnings all over the board. Really good, it's really good. And finally, I had two four and a half star reads because I've been really stingy with my fives apparently here. And the first one was I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I adored this book so much. I only gave it four and a half because I thought things tied up a little bit too neatly in the end there and there was a little bit of insta love that I was like, I can't give you a five because I don't agree with this, but. I just really, really, really loved it. It's twins, a boy and a girl, and they start out 
as being like really, really, really close and then something happens and now they don't even talk. And so what happened? And you don't know. And so the way that, I love the way that it was structured. So you have the boy character and I forget names once I've read the books, I'm terrible. Noah, I think his name might be, his chapters and they take place when they're 13, the twins are 13. And then her chapters, and I forget her name as well, because again, I'm terrible, and her chapters take place when they're 16. And so it's only when they come together that you understand what happened and all of the things and there's time for healing and it's so good and both of them have such distinct voices that I really appreciated that because a lot of times with dual perspectives I feel like I can't tell the characters apart but I could I could tell them apart they had different motivations and different lives and like different personalities and I really appreciated that and I also really loved how Noah I think his name was would see the world or he's an artist and everything he sees he like pictures like in his head, he paints pictures while he's happening. So it'll be like, uh, in like parentheses, it'll be like s portrait and it'll give it a title and it's like boy floating with balloons or something. I just really loved that idea. I loved the concept. It was just, it was beautiful and I loved it so much. And the last book of the month to talk to you about is Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. Also four and a half star read because it was a little slow and so I couldn't give it five because it was a little predictable and a little slow, but I still really loved it. It's a heist story with like amazing characters. Really, it's just the characters that that did it for me. I loved all of them. They were all so unique and, well, I don't know about unique, but they were all so great and wonderful and like, nah, I loved it so much. I mean, it's fantasy. It's set in the Grisha world. So, which I haven't finished reading that series yet, but you don't need to, you don't need to read them to understand Six of Crows. Grisha are people with special magical abilities, essentially. They're like elementalists. Anyway, so good. I really liked the combination of characters and the, I like how I didn't know everything all the time and things would constantly be switched because of secrets that are being told and secrets that are being held. And I just really appreciated that. And again, I just really loved all the characters. The characters are what did it. So much and so that I actually picked up the sequel, C Crooked Kingdom, like right now. Like that's what I'm reading currently. And I never pick up sequels that quickly. I always put it off forever. That's why I haven't read the rest of the Grisha trilogy. But I picked up Crooked Kingdom because I want to know what happens. So, yeah, I'm reading that now. And I really like Six of Crows. Boom. That's it. That's my reading month. That was my summer. The rest of it, what I read, 12 things. Now I'm back to school. It's going to be like two, but that's okay. So anyway, let me know what your favorite read was of the past month. And I guess that's it for me today. I'll see you next time. And if you're going back to school, happy back to school and good luck.